I didn't know I had to be grateful. I didn't know you're going to bring me back to life. And Allah says, there's no excuse. You experience the wind. Allah is comparing subhanahu wa ta'ala winds to wild horses. I swear by the winds that have been released by the main. The default position of the wind is destruction. What it's naturally designed to do is to destroy. And it is only when its reins are pulled back that it becomes calm and gentle. And it is a mercy, it's a rahmah of Allah that He's pulling on those reins and the winds are normal the way that they are. And so this is the opening of the surah, describing that the winds sometimes have been released and then they stampede. They don't care what's in their path and they just recklessly destroy. فَلَعَصِفَاتِ asfa. When nashirati nashra, and I swear by the distributor, he's saying that these winds they distribute clouds, and the same way pollen is distributed by the winds. The trees you see all around, and the greenery that you see, the flowers that you see, the weeds that you see, the animals on the earth are being fed by way of the pollen. Life on this earth, one of its main arteries. One of its vital arteries is actually just the wind. فَالْفَارِقَاتِ فَرْقًا Then they, they separate thoroughly. Meaning Allah has decided how many drops of rain will this village get? How much pollen will this place get? How much grass will grow here? What clouds will keep on passing and never rain at all? They distribute all manner of rizq on this earth and the distribution, the budgeting for every place, every inch of this earth is carefully divided. Then he says, then these winds, they bring into contact reminder. They're not just dropping pollen. They're not just dropping clouds on top of areas. They're dropping reminders. What does that mean? It actually means that just like you and I are sitting in khutbah right now, and we're listening to the word of Allah, and that's a reminder. Allah is actually saying for the person that develops their ability to contemplate, when they go outside, every time they feel the wind, they just got a reminder. They just got a khutbah. All of what Allah just said, it just reminds them. And it reminds them of both. Allah's power to give life and Allah's power to give death. Just from the fact that they felt a breeze on their face. And this is one of the most incredible features of the Qur'an. Allah calls His revelations ayat. And Allah calls the creation that He made. The wind, the mountain, the tree, the sky. He calls them ayat also. Those ayat outside in nature, they remind me of these ayat. And these ayat force me to think about those ayat. I keep going between ayat. In designing the system, the human being, the believer, is constantly exposed to the ayat of Allah. There's never a moment that they're not around the ayat of Allah. And the purpose of the ayat of Allah is to guide the human being. And so he says, he brings the winds, he drops them as a reminder to you and me. Uzran aw nudra. And then he says, why did he give this reminder to you and me? As a way to be enough as an excuse. Uzr. You know what that means? That means on judgment day, when a human being comes in front of Allah and says, I didn't know anything about your revelations. I didn't know I had to be grateful. I didn't know you're going to bring me back to life. And Allah says, there's no excuse. You experience the wind. That's enough. The wind was enough of a reminder that life comes out of the dead. Had you just contemplated, the winds were enough to know that someone's controlling this. That was enough. Uzran. And one nudra, and it's enough as a warning. It serves as a warning. So you could have a khutbah about the terrors of judgment day, or you could just contemplate the wind. And that's enough as a warning. Allah is creating a thinker out of us. He's making us someone who is forced to contemplate. I cannot be, you cannot be people of the Qur'an and we're not contemplating the world around us.